신천지 온라인 세미나 Testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant. Book of Revelation is testified throughout the whole world. August and September 2021, first and second Shincheonji Bible Seminar held online. 30,372 people participated from 12 regions throughout the country. Great enthusiastic response from 1,800 pastors. Finally, the book of Revelation has been opened for the first time in 2,000 years. The secrets of the kingdom of heaven inside the book of Revelation, the new covenant told by the chairman of Shincheonji and 12 tribe leaders, 18th of October until 27th of December, Mondays and Thursdays, 10 a.m., broadcasting worldwide from Shincheonji online seminar. We invite you to the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant. Testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant. To Shincheonji online seminar, to everyone coming and participating, our pastors, theological students, and all believers, it is great to meet everyone. I am Hong Gi-chol, who will be today's moderator. The Shincheonji Online Seminar, currently being held, is being broadcasted throughout the whole world at the same time. Transcending nationality, race, ideology, and culture, it is all believers that must know the Book of Revelation. Its prophecy and its physical fulfillment will be testified today. Book of Revelation is a book of prophecy in the New Testament that all believers must know. And also, it is a conclusion of the Bible. So therefore, at this time, everyone who is participating, I trust that it will be a great opportunity to understand the meaning of Revelation. Just like the light, rain, and air that gives life to all creation, even at this time, we pray that God's grace and love will be with everyone here. And with that heart, we will begin the seminar today. Let us all pray with the same heart. To our thankful and gracious Father God, today, the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant, we thank you for allowing the Shincheonji Online Seminar to be broadcasted throughout the world and being together with us, we give you all thanks and glory. This seminar, according to the prophecy of Revelation 22, verse 16, it is in the New Testament that Jesus promised to send the messenger, the promised pastor to the churches, Shincheonji's promised pastor, and also the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji, who will be testifying the prophecy of the entire chapters of Revelation and also its physical fulfillment. Last time, through the promised pastor, we learned the words of Revelation 1. And today, through the John tribe leader, we'll be learning the words of Revelation 2 and 3. As God is with us here, Please only allow a time to be glorifying you through this seminar and also with our John tribe leader who will be speaking the word. Please be with them. So through the power of the Holy Spirit, the secrets of kingdom heaven inside of Revelation 2 and 3 can be brightly and plainly testified. And all the, all the pastors and the theological students and all believers who are participating today, please allow your unlimited grace and love so we all can understand these precious words well through this time. Please allow us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and filled with the Word so that we can only glorify you through this blessed time. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, today's seminar, which is being held online, is conducted with strict adherence to the COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Last time, through the promised pastor, it was the words of Revelation 1 that was clearly testified as we learned.
To all the people who listen to the word, we trust that it was a graceful time of our hearts being burning with the word. And today, it is one of the 12 tribe leaders who learned the word directly from the promised master, the John tribe leader, who will continue on from last time, who will be testifying the words of Revelation 2 and 3. Revelation 2 and 3 has the same topic, the letter sent to the messengers of the seven churches. Through this, it is a book of Revelation. Some people may have understood it as a book of epistles, but the book of Revelation, it is a words of prophecy that must soon take place. And also Revelation 2 and 3, it is about what will be fulfilled at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation in today's time. Revelation 2 and 3 is about the covenant between God and the one overcomes. And also, it is regarding the promised pastor, the messenger of the covenant that God and Jesus promised. And also, it includes the 12 blessings that God promised to the one overcomes. Then today, through this seminar, Jesus, what is the content of the letter that Jesus sent to the messengers of the seven churches? And where are the churches of the seven messengers? And how did Jesus, who is in spirit, send the letters to them? And how did the churches receive these letters? And also, what are the twelve blessings promised to the one overcomes? And why are these things important to us? Today, all those questions and curiosities will be clearly answered. So now, the, when the physical fulfillment of the book of Revelation becomes testified in detail and clearly, please receive much realization, and we hope that the light of truth will be shining brightly in your hearts. Then, Igiwan John tribe leader, who will testify the word, we will greet. Everyone, can we please give him a round of applause? Greetings, everyone. To all the pastors and theological students and all believers around the world who carry a life of faith with the hope of kingdom of heaven, it is so great to meet you all. Today, as you have come to the Shincheonji Revelation Seminar, we sincerely thank you. Although each of our denominations and doctrines may be different, However, all of us, we are believers who love God and long for kingdom of heaven. As God said, God is the word. Through the word, I trust that we can meet God and also find a way to the kingdom of heaven. So therefore, at this time, with the word of revelation that will be testified, please listen well. And if this word is correct, I hope that we can walk in the way of this word. However, if there is anything that I testify incorrectly, I hope that you can also let me know as well. Before I begin today's lecture, I would like to briefly introduce about myself first. I am Igiwon tribe leader, who has been chosen in the name of John, the disciple of Jesus. The place that I learned the revealed word and its physical fulfillment, it was from Shincheonji Imani teacher, who received a revelation and I've been sealed. What the Lord prophesies in parables as according to the promise, as a physical entity had been appeared and testified, that is a testimony that I would like to deliver. However, because of concern of defamation, I will summarize the explanations. This seminar from Revelation 1 to 22 is a very unique seminar, and it will only be right for it to be testified to the whole world. We have been waiting for the second coming of the Lord and the fulfillment of the new covenant how eagerly have we been waiting? That is the news that I have come to deliver. I carry a life of faith since I was young. I went to many different denominations and churches. I also went to many prayer centers. I was eager and desperate in my life of faith towards God. I was diligent because I wanted to be blessed by God. I served and did much volunteer work at church. If it was church work, I didn't compromise. I prioritized it the most. By doing that, I thought God is going to manage my life and bless me. However, as time went by, 
My faith became smaller. There was no special reason, but as I was becoming more busier with the work of the world, my passion and diligence towards God and life of faith went cold. And at that time, I heard the revealed word and the physical fulfillment testified by s h i n c h o n j i Starting from the parables all the way to Revelation, the word was so clear and accurate, and my passion and diligence towards life of faith, which went cold, received life again, and my spirit became alive. The prophecy and the physical fulfillment testified was so clear. And before, I just told myself that I, I was saved, I received salvation. But now, with the word of prophecy and the physical fulfillment, I received certainty of salvation. Jesus said, at the time of the end, He will come back. At that time, these, these events will happen. And to this place that is created in such a way, That is a place where God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven will be together. And as I was at that very place, I was able to prove myself through the word. So now, who am I according to the Bible? What kind of physical entity am I in inside of the Bible? I'm able to live my life with the certainty of salvation. So today, it is a messenger that Jesus sent for the churches Teacher i m a n h e who taught this revealed word, I would like to testify that revealed word to you as well. And also, for all of you, I hope that you also be able to have the salvation and live a life with the word of life in that joy. Although our denominations are different, but we have one purpose, one objective, salvation and the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. So therefore, should we not all go to the kingdom of heaven? However, if we do not know where is heaven, how can we go there? Revelation is what teaches this clearly. So let us learn, and I pray that we can all go to the kingdom of heaven. And after listening to this testimony today, if there is anything that I testify incorrectly to the below phone number or the email address, please send your inquiries. Now, today, it will be Revelation 2 and 3 that I will testify. It will be about one hour, but if the time goes overboard a little bit, I ask you for your understanding and also ask to listen to this word well. Now, I will move to my right, and in front of the board, I will be testifying the word. Yes, this s h i n c h o n j i Revelation Online Seminar, the official topic is a testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation God's New Covenant. The content that I will testify today is Revelation 2 and 3. Now, Revelation 2 and 3, as we see the title, it is the letter sent to the messengers of the seven churches. The key points of Revelation 2 and 3 is that Revelation 2 and 3 is about the promise between Jesus and the one o v e r c o m e s The promise between Jesus and the one o v e r c o m e s In other words, it is a covenant. The reason why it says like that is because inside of the content here of Revelation 2 and 3, it is promised that Jesus will give 12 blessings to the one overcomes. This is the content that we will look at today. First of all, last time we saw the content of Revelation 1, we learned well, I trust, from our promised pastor. Then at that place, uh, in, that, in that content, what we must also know is Revelation 1, 12 to 19. Now Jesus chooses one person, John, and commands him to the send the letters to the seven churches. So this, according to this command, as John been chosen by Jesus, John sends the letters to the seven churches. That content is the content of Revelation 2 and 3. But what we must know here, 2,000 years ago, Apostle John, 
He is the one who saw the vision from Jesus. He recorded that vision that he saw. So therefore, at that time, because it was a vision that was shown, actually, there were no physical entities. So therefore, this word was only a prophecy. But when the time comes, this word will be fulfilled and the physical fulfillment and the physical entities will appear. And today, these words have been fulfilled. When these words are fulfilled, Jesus, who spoke these words, will return. And when He chooses one person, 2,000 years ago, it was John that Jesus chose. But in today's time, it is not that John of the past will come back to life and be chosen and send the letters, but today, there is one person that will be chose, chosen in today's time. That person, let us name him New John. So, it is the pastor of the physical fulfillment today. So today, it is New John chosen by Jesus. This one person sends the letters to the seven messengers. And these words have been fulfilled today. So in autumn 1977, in the Republic of Korea, in the province of Gyeongsangbuk-do, Cheongdo, Hyeolli-gyo, these words were fulfilled. Then, today, as Jesus chose one person, and to that person, commanded him to send the letters, then, the seven churches that received the letters, what is the meaning of these seven churches? So, as the physical entities of the seven churches appear today, it is the tabernacle temple where the seven messengers are at today. So according to Revelation 1 verse 20, the seven stars are the messengers of the seven churches. Seven lampstands are the seven churches. Here, seven lampstands, according to Revelation 4, 5, it is referring to the seven spirits. So, as the seven spirits are together with the messengers of the seven churches, those messengers of the seven churches become the one who belong to God, belong to Jesus. They come as the seven stars. And those seven messengers have been appeared today. And as you see here in front, they work in this church here. And this church name is Tabernacle Temple where the seven messengers worked in. The Tabernacle Temple. So 2,000 years ago, it was among the vision revelation where the letters were sent. But when the letters are sent in a vision, there's actually no one who's, receiving, who's sending the letter. However, in today's time, in the physical fulfillment, New John, who's been chosen by Jesus, he does send the letters in reality to the seven messengers. Then, this content of sending the letters, let us see. The content of Revelation 2 and 3, there are a lot of content. So therefore, because of time constraints, we'll not be able to read everything. So, uh, we will read, but the part on verse 1 to 7, and we will also look at the entire content through these words as well. So Revelation 2, 1 till 7, let us read it together. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from this place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Yes, you had read well. So, as we see the content of Revelation 2, 1 to 7 closely, firstly, there is the, the receiver of the letter, and there's also the sender of the letter. 
And also, there is the one who speaks on behalf, who is the one who sends out letter on behalf. So now, as we see in Revelation 2 and 3, there are seven total churches. But every time the letter are sent, this is what is recorded. First of all, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, it says, this means there is a receiver, the receiver of the messenger of the church in Ephesus. There is also the one who sends the letters. It is the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lamps. It is his letter. And this being is Jesus. As we see in Revelation 1, 12 to 18, that Jesus says, spiritual body is recorded. So therefore, inside of Revelation 2 and 3, when the letters are sent to the seven churches, that image of Jesus, also we can see it is the same image that is recorded in Revelation 1, 12 to 18. And as it says, these are the words of Him. This means, it is Jesus' letter that are sent on behalf, there's the one who speaks on behalf, is what we can see through this content. So, the messenger of the Church of Ephesus is the receiver. And the one who sends the letter, there's a sender, who is Jesus, as we are able to know. But, Jesus, through the one who speaks on behalf, sends to one of the seven messengers the letters are sent. But when we see inside of the content of the letter, how are they carrying a life of faith we are able to realize through the content of the letter? Then inside of verse 4, Yet I hold this against you, You have forsaken your first love, it says. So therefore, the seven messengers, the first love of the seven messengers was Jesus. But they did something wrong. So therefore, there is something against them. They have forsaken the first love, is what it says. Now, they are doing something greatly wrong. Furthermore, Remember the height from which you have fallen. Repent. And do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. The seven spirits that was given to you and the task that was given to you will be taken away, as Jesus says, and then it is said, you must repent. This is the, every time the letters are sent to the seven churches, this is what it says, repent, repent. Then this means they are doing something wrong. Furthermore, then what kind of life of faith are they carrying as we see? They have become one with the Nicolaitans. So, inside of that tabernacle of God, the seven stars that were in Jesus' right hand, the seven messengers who were at the tabernacle temple whom Jesus chose, at that place, Satan's workers, the Nicolaitans entered in, and the seven messengers had become one with them. This fact has now been told to the seven messengers by that one pastor that Jesus chose, the one who speaks on behalf. So therefore now it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here when it says Spirit, this Spirit is referring to Jesus. So to the churches, to the seven messengers, you must listen to these words, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. And what is being done? Yes, it is. A promise is being made. So therefore, in the beginning, when we talked about the key point of Revelation 2 and 3, the most important key point, it is that it is about the promise between Jesus and the one overcomes. Like this, every time the letters are sent to the seven messengers, at the end it says, To him who overcomes, such a blessing will be given. That content of the blessing, there are 12 blessings. 
So, therefore, from Jesus, the one who overcomes, who receives the 12 blessings, this is the most important key point that we will learn today. As we continue, now through the content that we just read, we're able to realize there are three entities that appear in these letters. So firstly, it is the seven messengers. The, to the angel of the who-who, to the angel of the who-who, the reality, the fulfillment of this were the seven messengers. Seven messengers, seven stars, seven churches. The physical fulfillment have appeared today. There were seven people who were chosen by Jesus. As they were chosen by Jesus, it was the spirits of heaven that taught them, and on this earth, they were the people who became pastors who were able to deliver the word of God on this earth. But at this place where they were at, it is Satan's pastors, the Nicolaitans who entered in. The physical fulfillment of them were the pastors of Stewardship Education Center of today. And to these seven messengers, it was someone who was newly chosen by Jesus, the one who's going to send the letters on behalf of Jesus, the one who speaks on behalf of Jesus, the physical fulfillment, it is New John today. In other words, 2,000 years ago, once again, 2,000 years ago, Apostle John is the one who saw the vision from Jesus. So therefore, inside of that vision, they sent the letters to the seven churches. However, it was a vision, so therefore, there's no one who's receiving the letters in reality. However, in today's time, those words have been fulfilled and the physical entities have been appeared. So through this new John who's been chosen, new John is the one who sends the letters to the seven messengers and that is the work that Jesus commanded. I hope that we can remember this content well. So therefore, the order of the appearance of the characters inside of Revelation 1 and Revelation 2 and 3. First of all, seven messengers are chosen. They are taught the word, they are raised up, and they became pastors. And at this place where the tabernacle temple, where they were at, the word was being testified. For 2,000 years, it was a spiritual darkness, but they were the seven lampstand. They did the work of the lampstand. It was a word like the lampstand, the light of the lamp that was testified. Many people who were inside of famine and thirst, who longed for God's words. Many, many people came and listened to the word. But Satan, at this time, uses the pastors that he works through and at this place of God's tabernacle, Satan tried to destroy this place. So therefore, those pastors that Satan worked through, now using the many, many names of the Old and New Testament, it is Nicolaitans, Palam, Pala, that they are expressed as they are Satan's workers. So therefore, these Satan's pastors entered in to destroy God's tabernacle. And sadly, the seven messengers who did not know the entities of the Satan's false pastors became one with them. As that happened, Jesus is now, through this new John who's newly chosen, tells the seven messengers to never become one with these Satan's pastors. Rather, you must fight and overcome them. It is a letter that was sent. So therefore, inside this content of the letter, there are three main things inside of the content of the letters. What you have seen, what is now, what will take place later. There are three things. What you have seen is the image of Jesus and the seven stars and seven golden lamps then. What is now is the events of deception of Satan. What will take place later? If you overcome, this is the most important thing of today. If you overcome, what is promised in Revelation 2 and 3, the 12 blessings will be given. This is the most important content. So, now as we see, there is Satan's deception. It is now telling us the reality of what is happening to these seven messengers. So therefore, now, Revelation 2, 14 till 15, as we see these content, right now, what kind of life of faith are the seven messengers 
caring is spoken here. As we see here, the seven messengers, they are eating the food sacrificed to idols. And there are also characters called here as Balam and Pala. They are referring to Nicolaitans. They are Satan's pastors. So they entered in and they are giving the food sacrifice to idols, to the seven messengers, and making them commit sexual immorality with Satan. And also it says, there are those who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. It is a letter of warning to them. Through whom are the, le- are the letters sent? Yes, it is. New John, who was newly chosen by Jesus. It is the letters that are sent. But sadly, these seven messengers did not repent and did not fight back, and rather they became one with the Nicolaitans. So therefore, the seven messengers chosen by Jesus, they have now become the soldiers of the devil. Then, in this situation, that one person who knows the identity of the devil's soldiers, it is the one who sent the letters, the new John. New John did not eat the food sacrifice to idols like the seven messengers. And he also did not become one with Satan's false pastors. Rather, he fights and overcomes them. That content, we will speak a little bit later. But the one who speaks on behalf, New John, he overcomes. Then, if he overcomes, what did Jesus say? There will be 12 blessings that will be given. It was promised, isn't it? Now, this content is what we will look mainly today. So, if you overcome, there is the promise of Jesus. This is what I really wanted to say to you today. The promise of Jesus that will be given to the one overcomes. In Revelation 2 verse 7, it is the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise. This paradise is referring to the kingdom of heaven. And the fruit of the tree of life, it is referring to the word of life. As you see, It is not talking about a real fruit, but rather the fruit of the tree of life. It is the word of life that will be given to the one who overcomes. Then the one who overcomes will receive this word of life. He will be able to eat it, isn't it? And secondly, in Revelation 2 verse 10, let us read it together as well. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Yes, you have read well. Now, as we see in Revelation 2 verse 10, it says here, Be faithful to the point of death. Then here, I, who is I here? I will be Jesus. Yes. And Jesus, what will He give? He says, yes, He will give the crown of life. So eventually, to Satan's pastors, Nicolaitans, to the one who fights and overcomes them, it is a crown of life that will be given. Then, the crown of life that Jesus will give, what is it referring to? That, according to Revelation 2 verse 10, James 1 12, Titus 1 verse 2, the crown of life, it means eternal life will be given. This is what it meant. The purpose of our life of faith, what should it be? It wouldn't be eating or living well in the world. Certainly, Jesus said, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Do not worry about what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, because it is the pagans who run after all those things. Eventually, what is the purpose of the Bible, purpose of life of faith? According to the words that Jesus delivered 2,000 years ago, what was it? It was eternal life. So now, the purpose of life of faith, eternal life, 
We must put in the effort to receive this. But the Bible, clearly, it promises. To him who overcomes, Jesus promised to give eternal life. To the one who overcomes, that eternal life will be allowed firstly as we believe. Up until here, we saw the two blessings. Thirdly, Revelation 2, verse 11, let us read. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. Yes, you had read well. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Spirit is Jesus, says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death, he says. Then, the one overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. What would this mean? Now, that means not receiving, uh, not being hurt by the second death, it means not receiving the punishment of hell. So, the first death is talking about the death of the body, the flesh. But as people have a spirit, it doesn't end there. There can also be the punishment that our spirit can receive. As we see in Revelation 20, it is according to God's word there will be a judgment. Then, the purpose of our life of faith, it is kingdom of heaven, it is to enter into eternal life. Then we should never receive this punishment of hell. So firstly, the Bible, it promises to the one overcomes, the punishment of hell will not be given. It is promised, and this blessing of not receiving the punishment of hell, the blessing is allowed. Continually, inside of the word of Jesus, to the one overcomes, these blessings will be given. They are the key points of Revelation 23. I hope that, I hope that we will know. Now, let's have a look at the fourth blessing. Revelation 2, verse 17, let us read. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Yes, inside of Revelation 2 verse 17, as we see, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, the Spirit is referring to Jesus. Hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it, it says. Then Jesus, as he promises to the one who overcomes, now there are two things that are promised now. It is the hidden manna and also the white stone that is promised to be given. Then, let's have a look at this content. Now, the hidden manna. The answer to the hidden manna, it means the word of the secrets of kingdom of heaven. Now here, when we look at manna, we can go to the time of Moses in Exodus 16, 31 to 35. As we see, God, through Moses, brought as God brought the people of Israelites out of Egypt, in morning and night, God will give the manna and the quails. But that manna was a physical food at that time. But although they ate that physical food, they still died. But this physical manna, which is used in parables, Jesus, in John 6, starting from verse 48, Jesus says, I am the living bread from heaven. So, in other words, he is parabolizing the manna from the time of Moses. And Jesus said, You, although at that time of Moses, ate the manna, although God gave it from heaven, it was a physical manna and people died. But I am the living bread from heaven. And if you eat this bread, you will have eternal life. And this bread is my flesh to give life to the world. And then he said, you must eat my flesh and my blood. So, we are able to know that the manna is referring to the word. But in today's content, it says the hidden manna. That means the word was hidden. 
So therefore, inside of the Bible, about the kingdom of heaven, it is spoken in parables, and this word is hidden. Especially, as we see in Revelation 5, about that word of kingdom of heaven, God sealed it with seven seals. But when those words, when the time comes, becomes totally open in Revelation 10, this word becomes revealed. And when we see in Revelation 10, it is to New John, to one person, that revealed book becomes given, and he eats that book. So in this content, to the one overcomes, Jesus gives the hidden manna, the words of the secrets of kingdom of heaven, which becomes totally open, this revelation is given. Then here, one very amazing thing here is that this word of God, this word of Jesus, when nobody was able to completely know of this word, but in today's time, according to these words of Jesus, if one person receives this revealed word, then that person will be someone who will master the words of the Bible. Then, when we only know the Bible, we can follow that will of the Bible and go to kingdom of heaven. But, on the premise that we cannot go to heaven because one will not be able to follow this word, but if one person knows this word, We must seek this person. We must find this person. And we must also say, please share that word that you received. So therefore, I will also know the meaning of this word and go to the kingdom of heaven. So that is why Jesus, He promised, to the one who overcomes, I will give the hidden manna. It is certainly not a light issue for us to think about. And also, as we see, the promise of Jesus to the one overcomes, it is the white stone that is promised. White stone. What is the characteristic of stone? Stone is very hard. So if it hits something, then it is not the stone, but the other thing that it hits that will be crushed. Spiritually, this is the judgment. So what is the white stone? It is the authority of judgment. then that authority of judgment, how is the judgment given? It is not with one's own thought. It is with the word of God. So therefore, just like the old times of Moses, on that stone, it was the word of God that was engraved. And with that word engraved on that stone, Moses ruled the people of Israel and also judged the people as well. In John 12, verse 48, the very word that I spoke will condemn him at the last day, Jesus said. So therefore, the authority of judgment, the white stone, it means the judgment will be given through the word of God. Then if the authority of judgment is given to the one overcomes, then the one overcomes as he received that revealed word, as we saw before, the hidden manna, then that means through that word, he also received the authority of judgment. I believe this is truly a great event. So one must recognize this person who has this authority of judgment to not be judged. If one ignores the one who has that authority of judgment and persecutes that person, then wouldn't the people receive the judgment from that person? So in Matthew 21, 42 to 44, Jesus said, I am a stone, but the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, will be crushed, Jesus said. Then for us, In today's time, to the one overcomes who received the revealed word, and that one overcomes who received the authority of judgment, we must find him and be the ones who do not receive the judgment. So therefore, the one overcomes who has this authority of judgment, we are able to realize he is such an important person. As we continue, Yes, Revelation 2, 26-28. Through this, let us also see the promise that Jesus gives to the one overcomes. Let us read. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He will dash them to pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my Father. 
I will also give him the morning star. Yes, you had read well. Here, there's also a very important content. To him who overcomes, it keeps on repeating. To every church, at the end, it always talks about to him who overcomes and does my will to the end. Then, please see this. I will give authority over the nations. The authority over the nations. Then nations, this means all nations without any exception. Now, when we see a universal flag with all nations, all the nations' flags are all included there. Then, authority over all nations is given to who? Is given to the one who overcomes. It is promised. And also, as authority over nations will be given to him, then he, he who is he, the one overcomes, he will rule them with an iron scepter, and he will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I, who is I, I is Jesus who, are, who is speaking these words, I have received authority from my Father, is what it says. Then, when we see these words, to the one who overcomes, authority over the nations, which is referred as the iron scepter will be given. And that iron scepter, just like Jesus, a long time ago, just like He received it from Father God, in today, He will give it to the one overcomes that is promised. Then, with this, and also, it says, I, I is again Jesus, will also give Him him is the one overcomes. I will give him the morning star. Then, the iron scepter, the authority over nations, and about morning star, with these two things, let's have a look. Then, the authority over the nations, the iron scepter. Iron scepter is the iron staff. So, iron staff, it means, it is referring to the eternal authority to rule. So, in the old times, to a leader, a ruler, ruler or hold a staff or a scepter, it is symbolizing the authority to rule. So, Jesus, as we saw before, it was a hidden manna that was given, and the fruit of the tree of life that was in the paradise, the word of life of Jesus was given. Then, with that word, it is the authority to rule all nations with that word will also be given. Then, in Psalms 2, verse 9, what did it say? Just like I received it from my Father. Then, in Psalms 2, verse 9, as we see, it is God who says, You will be my Son. And to that Son, the iron scepter will be given. And that Son with the iron scepter will dash them to pieces like pottery, will do the work of judgment, it was already mentioned. Then, in John 17, verse 2, Jesus, He was granted the authority over all people. Then that authority in Revelation 17, verse 8, it said that authority was the Word of God. So Jesus, and also, that authority over nations that Jesus gives the gives to the one overcomes today, that iron scepter, it is not to rule with one's own thought in their own way. It is done through the word of God. So in John 5, Jesus said, My judgment is righteous. Why? Because it is not done according to what Jesus simply wanted to do, but according to the Word of God, according to God's will. So, very importantly, to the one overcomes, it is the authority over nations will be given. Then that ruling, how will that ruling be done? It is through the Word of God. Even the authority of judgment was given. And it is the authority to rule that is also given. To who? To the one overcomes then truly, when we see inside of this Bible, if we really believe in this Bible, because we are believers, if we love the Bible, then this, the one overcome that Jesus mentions, we must meet Him, isn't it? Then we can receive the food of eternal life. And also, we will be not be judged by Him as well. So, we saw up till the sixth blessing. Jesus continually, He repeats, saying, 
to the one who overcomes, I will give this blessing. What is Jesus doing? He's making a promise. I hope that we will certainly remember this. Now, the seventh blessing, to him who overcomes what is given, it is the morning star that will be given. The morning star, in Revelation 22, verse 16, I, Jesus, is the morning star. Then, to the one who overcomes, the morning star will be given. This means, Jesus, who is in spirit, but the one who overcomes, New John, today, he is in flesh. So, as Jesus will become one with the one overcomes, Spirit will become one with the flesh and will live together. So, to the one overcomes, who is together? Yes, it is the Spirit of Jesus that is together. This is not the words of men. This is the promise of Jesus. So, to the one overcomes, like this, Jesus will be together with Him. Then, as we see in Revelation 3, then about the blessing that Jesus promised, let's have a look. Let us read. He who overcomes will like them be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. Yes, you had read well. He who overcomes, he overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will, Jesus, Jesus will never blot out His name, in other words, the name of the one overcomes from the book of life, but will acknowledge His name before my Father and His angels. Then, it is the two blessings that is mentioned to the one overcomes. Firstly, He'll be dressed in white. And secondly, His name will not be blotted out from the book of life. It will be recorded in the book of life. These two blessings are given again. Even one blessing is so big, but even 12 blessings are mentioned. Then about the dressed in white, the white clothes we will see. Then white clothes, eventually, the clothes is referring to the clothes of the heart. Then when that clothes of the heart became white, it means that person's actions, deeds, are regarded as righteous, is being acknowledged by God and Jesus. Then that person's life of faith and faith and deeds are righteous, is being acknowledged. Then firstly, when we see inside of the Bible, to who? Yes, the one overcomes will be acknowledged by Jesus that his deeds and actions were righteous. We will continue. Then the book of life being recorded in the book of life will not be blotted out, but will be acknowledged his name before my Father and his angels will be names will, will be recorded in the book of life. Then what is the meaning of the book of life? It is the registry of heaven. Book of life it is a book that records the names of the people who have life. Then, what is opposite? Opposite will be the book of death. Previously, when we look at like old movies or old dramas of histories, it has books of death where people who will die, their names are recorded. But book of life, it is regarding, it is regarding the names of the people who have life. Their names are recorded. Then where is life? In John 1 verse 4, inside of the Word of God, there is life. Then the ones who have life are the ones who have the Word of God, the ones who live according to God's words, the ones who will live according to God's words, their names will be recorded in the book of life. Then how important is this book of life? In Revelation, it is mentioned, Six times. Revelation 3, verse 5. Revelation 13, verse 8. Revelation 17, verse 8. Revelation 20, verse 12. Revelation 20, verse 15. And Revelation 21, verse 27. Then us, including myself and all of our beloved pastors and theology students and believers listening to this word, our names must be recorded in the book of life, isn't it? But if I do not know what is the meaning of Book of Life, then will my name will be recorded in here or not? But what is important is, the Book of Life is given to who? 
to the one who overcomes. We will see the 12th blessing later on, but in that 12th blessing, what it says, the one who overcomes will be able to sit on the throne of God and Jesus together. So in Revelation 20, 12 to 15, God, He has the book of life. But in that book of life, as God's throne is together with the one overcomes, then who has the book of life? Yes, it is the one overcomes who has the registry of heaven, the book of life. So the one overcomes, his name becomes recorded in the book of life first. So therefore, one must find and meet the one overcomes for the people to realize how their names can also be recorded in the book of life. So Revelation 2 and 3, Jesus continually repeats, Please meet this one overcomes. Jesus gives all the 12 blessings to the one overcomes. You must meet this person eventually to go to the kingdom of heaven and also receive the food of eternal life given in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus continually is emphasizing it. This right now, as I teach in this lecture, this is what I want to deliver to you through this lecture today. Who is the one overcomes according to the Bible? We must meet him, we trust. Now, it is Revelation 3, verse 12. Now, in Revelation 2 and 3, among the content of Revelation 2 and 3, it is a very important verse. Let us read it together. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on him my new name. Yes, you had read well. Now, inside of Revelation 3 verse 12, now, there are two more blessings. Shall we say it together? Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. What kind of meaning would it be? I don't think I will have to explain. I think we will know. When we see someone who is very trustworthy and reliable, we can say, You are the pillar of our house, we say. But Jesus regards the one who overcomes to be the pillar in the temple of God. Pillar is referring to the very important task. If the pillar is uprooted, the whole temple will fall. So, never again will He leave it. The one who overcomes will never leave God's temple. The work of the history of 6,000 years of the Bible, it was a war between God and Satan. Many people betrayed and broke God's covenant. However, at the last time, the one who overcomes will never leave the temple of God, it says. Then, as I repeat, Overcoming doesn't mean one fights and overcomes anyone. Certainly, it must be according to the Bible. Fighting and overcoming the one who belongs to Satan. So the seven messengers fought and lost to the seven pastors of the stewardship education center, the Nicolaitans. But Jesus promises to the one who fights and overcomes the Nicolaitans, this blessing will be given. That person will become the one overcomes according to the Bible. Then to the one overcomes, I, Jesus, will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the New Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God, and I will also write on him. Him is the one overcomes, I will write on him my new name. Then there are two things that is mentioned. Firstly, the one who overcomes will become the pillar in God's temple. And secondly, to him who overcomes God's name. And the new Jerusalem, the city of my God, which is coming down from heaven, this simply put, it is kingdom of heaven. So, to the one who overcomes, the kingdom of heaven will be together with him. And also, my new name, Jesus' new name, will be written on the one who overcomes. Then, this means, firstly, being the pillar in God's temple. It means, when God's kingdom is built on this earth, it is the most important task that will be given. So, in order to build God's kingdom on this earth, to the one, 
who fights and overcomes the Nicolaitans, the word of life is given, authority of judgment is given, hidden manna is given, everything is given. So therefore, according to the word of God on this earth, God's kingdom becomes established. And at the center of it, it is the one who overcomes who will be at the center of it. Do you understand? Now, as we continue on, the name of God and the name of the holy city, New Jerusalem, and the new name of Jesus will be written on the one who overcomes. This, as it says, God, Jesus, and even the holy city, New Jerusalem, in other words, the kingdom of heaven, will be with who? Yes, will be with the one who overcomes. We'll be together with the one who overcomes. Then, God, Jesus, Kingdom Heaven, we cannot see it, right? But we always say, I will go to Heaven. When we do not know where is Kingdom Heaven, where will we go to? However, there is a way to go to the Kingdom of Heaven. When the Kingdom of Heaven comes down onto this earth, we can go to that heaven that has come down. 2,000 years ago, Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 17, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Many times, He said, but many people didn't come to Jesus. That Jesus was the kingdom of heaven that God was together with. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Me. He also said, The Father is inside of Him. But people rather persecuted that Jesus and even killed him. 2,000 years ago, going to Jesus was going to the kingdom of heaven. Then today, God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven to the one of our comes. Eventually, it says, will come to the one of our comes. So therefore, going to the one of our comes is also going to God, going to Jesus, and going to the kingdom of heaven. I hope that we can understand the spiritual meaning of this logically. I hope that we will not judge without the Word. The Word. The Word is the way, it says in John 1.1. So therefore, that Word should be the way. Jesus promised to the one who comes, this, this, this will be given. God, Jesus, and even the kingdom of heaven will be together with the one who comes. The one who fought and overcame the Nicolaitans. If God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven is one with the one who comes, then we also must find Him, and I hope that we can understand this logic. Now lastly, it is Revelation 3, verse 21, let us read. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Yes, you had read well. To him who overcomes, continually it mentions about the him who overcomes, who did the one overcomes fight against and overcome? It was the Nicolaitans. The one who fought and overcame the Nicolaitans. I, Jesus, will give the right to sit with me on my throne, on the throne of Jesus, just as I overcame. Jesus overcame at the time of the first coming, isn't it? In John 16, verse 33, as Jesus overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne, then it means the one who overcomes will be able to sit on Jesus' throne, just like Jesus was able to sit on God's throne. Throne is like a chair, isn't it? Then being able to sit together on that throne means Jesus will be together with the one overcomes. Just like Jesus was together with God, and God was together with Jesus, in today's time, Jesus will come to the one overcomes and will be working together. Then all these things, now as we see, the one overcomes will be able to sit together on the throne of Jesus. Jesus and the one overcomes will work together as one. Then now, that twelve blessings that will be given to the one overcomes, we saw all of them. Now, as we saw them, now we can think at least once about who is it that we must meet. Can you think about it? I hope that we can think about it.
This is not the words of men. These are the words of Jesus. To the one overcomes, the twelve blessings will be given. Then, as it says, to him who overcomes, so therefore it's a condition, isn't it? If he overcomes, it's a conditional promise. So if he does not overcome, he cannot receive it. The seven messengers, if they overcame, it will be given to them. But eventually, the seven messengers did not fight and overcome the Nicolaitans, but became one with them. Then who is the one overcomes? That is not mentioned inside of Revelation 2 and 3. It is not mentioned there. Where do we need to go to? We need to go to Revelation 12. Revelation 12, verse 11. Let us also read it together. They overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Yes, as we see here, they overcame Him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. It says, Now the one who overcomes now appears. The one who overcomes. So therefore, inside of Revelation 12, finally, the one overcomes that was promised inside of Revelation 2 and 3, now he finally does appear in Revelation 12. That one overcomes does not fight and overcome anyone to become the one overcomes. He does not become the one overcomes by fighting and overcoming someone walking down the street. He must fight and overcome the Nicolaitans according to Revelation 2 and 3. So as we see in Revelation 12, there's a red dragon that appears. There's also the beast with seven heads and ten horns. Now, this we will learn in Revelation 12. This in one word, it is the Nicolaitans. So, there is a male child who appears, who fought and overcame the Nicolaitans. This child, in Revelation 12 verse 5, by fighting and overcoming the dragon, is the one who will rule all nations with the iron scepter. Then, if you remember the content that I mentioned before, to the one overcomes, in Revelation 2, 26-27, the authority to rule all nations will be given the iron scepter. Then, the male child who fought and overcame the dragon, who will rule all nations with an iron scepter, this child is who? It is the one overcomes who has the iron scepter. So that one overcomes finally has appeared on this earth. So that name we will call New John. And also, according to the promise of Jesus, if you overcome, this blessing will be given. But according to the promise, as you overcame and received the 12 blessings, it is a promised pastor promised by Jesus. Can we understand? And also, that pastor is the pastor of God and the pastor of Jesus. So like this, the event of overcoming has happened. And how many blessings? All 12 blessings were given. The word of life, food of eternal life, also authority to rule all nations, the iron scepter, authority of judgment, the book of life, God, Jesus, and the kingdom of heaven being together. All these blessings were all given to the one overcomes. Then, now, In our life of faith, we must certainly find this one overcomes. At the time of the first coming, one had to find Jesus. One had to receive Jesus to become the children of God. Then today, the one overcomes who has the word of life by finding that pastor and receiving that revealed word that he received. Can you also give me that word of life so that I also want to go to kingdom of heaven? Can you give it to me so that I can go to heaven through that word of eternal life? So therefore, now I'd like to deliver the conclusion of today's word. Now then, today, we must meet the one who overcomes, that one overcomes that Jesus promised. If you overcome, the twelve blessings will be given. We must meet the one overcomes. Only by that we can receive 
the word of life, the food of eternal life. We can follow the will of that word, and by following that will, by not adding or taking away, we can go to the kingdom of heaven. When one meets the one o v e r c o m e s we can receive salvation. When we belong to the one o v e r c o m e s we can receive and eat the food of eternal life and go to kingdom of heaven. It doesn't mean to worship the one o v e r c o m e s as God. We should never misunderstand. A Shincheonji is a Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Temple of the Tabernacle of the Testimony. We are a denomination that believes in God, and Jesus is our Lord. However, that Word of God and the Word of Jesus, it was given to the promised pastor, the one overcomes. Then how, how did he receive it? Because according to the Bible, he fought and overcame the Nicolaitans. So therefore, who are the Nicolaitans? The one overcomes, he knows everything about them. What are their names? How do they look like? He knows everything. And not only that, there were the seven messengers of Jesus. In that tabernacle of the seven messengers, the Nicolaitans entered in. And with that Nicolaitans, the promised pastor eventually fought and overcame them. So who would the promised pastor also know, also knows the seven stars? What were their names? How were their faces looking like? Were they men or women? He knows everything. So what is it that I really want to say? It is that we today, in today's time, in Revelation 5 verse 1, that words of secrets of kingdom of heaven, God who wrote those words, He held those words, and in today's time, He gave it to Jesus. And Jesus opened the seals of that book and fulfilled each word recorded in that book. But when it is fulfilled, the physical entities that is promised are fulfilled and appear. But it is not the seven stars, seven churches that appear. It were seven messengers, seven people that appeared. And the Nicolaitans, it is not the Nicholas of the past that appears. It is people like this that appears. When all these physical entities are fulfilled by Jesus, there is one person who Jesus told everything of what Jesus fulfilled. All the secrets inside Revelation, Jesus told him. So this promised pastor, the one who comes, is the one who was next to Jesus, who saw and heard all these things. So according to Revelation 22, verse 16, I, Jesus, will send my angel to testify these things to the churches. The one who is sent to testify what he has seen and heard. To where? To the churches. So this, s h i n c h e o n j i Online Revelation Seminar, it is this promised pastor, the one overcomes, following the command of Jesus to the churches, to our beloved pastors, theological students, and believers, is telling the physical entities that have been fulfilled of Revelation. So that you can also learn of this word. And according to this word, according to this promise, the one who overcomes who received the 12 blessings from Jesus did appear on this earth so that you can know that, so that you can also come to the one who overcomes and receive the food of eternal life. This inside of Revelation 1.1, it was not possible by us just simply praying, nor it was Jesus coming to everyone and teaching. It is only to one person that Jesus gives this word by overcoming the food of eternal life, the fruit of tree of life, the word of life. We can also go and receive it from the one who overcomes. And also by receiving that food of eternal life, we can also overcome. It is not only the one who overcomes that overcome, but anyone who goes to the kingdom of heaven, we must also fight and overcome with the truth. fighting and overcoming Satan, the devil, and the world. We receive that food of eternal life, and by meeting the one who overcomes promised by Jesus through those words, I hope that we can all be the ones who can go to the kingdom of heaven. Us, our pastors, theological students, and all believers, although our denominations and doctrines may be different, We all believe in God, believe in Jesus. We all read the same Bible. And also, what is it that we really want? I trust that we all hope for kingdom of heaven and eternal life. So therefore, we must all enter into heaven according to these words. We should never fight against each other. We should never criticize or persecute 
each other. As Jesus said, As I have loved you, love each other. According to those words of Jesus, I hope that we can love each other. I also love you. So lastly, we, inside of God, inside of Jesus, with the meaning that we are one, I hope that we can all shout out together, we are one. Today, the one who overcame the Nicolaitans, he goes to many, many places and shout these words. So today, as we are one, under God, under Jesus, with that meaning, when I shout, We are one. Everyone, please hold up your finger and let us shout together. And then, I will pray and we will complete. Yes, inside of God, inside of Jesus, we trust we are one. We are one. Yes, let us pray together. To our holy, most holy Father God, as you allow this precious day to us, inside of your word, as you allowed us all to become one and be gathered to your word, we truly give you all thanks and glory for your guidance. Father God, now according to your word, today this revelation has been fulfilled and according to these words of revelation, the messenger that Jesus promised, the one who fought and overcame Nicolaitans, has appeared on this earth. So therefore, Father God, as Jesus has given the 12 blessings to the one overcomes, the word of life, the food of eternal life, the authority of judgment, and the kingdom of heaven has been allowed to him. So as we now meet the one overcomes, be able to eat the food of eternal life, please help us so that we can also live with you in the kingdom of heaven forevermore. Let us not fight against each other, but love each other. Please allow us to all become one inside of God and Jesus, so that we can all inherit that kingdom of heaven as all believers. Please help us. And to our beloved pastors and theological students, and to all believers, please allow your unlimited grace to them at all times. As we truly desire this, we pray all this in the name of our Lord, our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, thank you very much for watching. Thank you. Yes. It is a prophecy of the book of Revelation and its physical fulfillment. It was clearly explained to us to Igiwon tribe leader. Let us give a round of applause to thank him. Today, as we hear the word, how is it? The book of Revelation that we thought was just simply very difficult, but now we can understand it well and realize it. This is because At that very place, when all the events of Revelation were fulfilled, there was a promised pastor who saw and heard all the events of the fulfillment. Because the tribe leader learned it from the promised pastor, the tribe leader is also able to explain in this way. Now, do we look forward to the next chapter? The next chapter will be about Revelation 4 and 5. Let us watch our preview video. This kingdom of heaven, don't you want to go to this heaven? Please raise your hand if you want to go to heaven. Then how can we go to heaven? Are we going up to the heaven where God dwells? Or will the heaven come down? Christian pastors all over the world need to listen to this content very well. This is because, finally, the work of salvation through the blood of Jesus is fulfilled now. Everyone, I love you all. Let us all be one. Yes, next week, Monday, as you watch in this preview video, will be the content of Revelation 4 and 5 that will be delivered by instructor Yi Jung-woo. Revelation 4 and 5 is about the spiritual realm, the kingdom of heaven, where God and Jesus are at. The time will be the same time as today, 10 a.m. I hope that we can all come and we'll be able to understand the precious, true will of God and the word of promise. The reason why Shincheonji Church can confidently testify the words of Revelation like this is because there is a promised pastor 
who mastered not only the book of Revelation, the new covenant, but also the prophecy and the physical fulfillment of the prophecies of the four gospels as well. So, not only the book of Revelation you heard today, but if you are curious about the word of Shincheonji or the church of Shincheonji, you may please contact these numbers of the 12 tribes as shown on the screen. We will do our best to answer you and guide you as well. Then, now, let us do the Lord's Prayer and we will end all order of the event. Together, let us do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With this, the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of the Book of Revelation, God's New Covenant, we will end Shincheonji Online Seminar. We thank, thank everyone who are here together. Thank you.